And hello everybody, welcome to our open phone discussion of heat transfer. We're gonna start, of course, um, with explaining, you know, what we're gonna go through. Just gonna cover a course over, not course overview, uh, kind of a video overview of this uh, series I have. Alright, so um, basically, if you go to form tutorials, Right, and then you see this part called heat transfer. Yeah, basically we are going to go through some some of the files here. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, these these uh, pertain a lot to convection. All right. So, um, you see things like buoyant pimple foam, for example. So buoyant pimple foam is a transient solver. Okay. Um, for um convection whether it's natural or forced convection you can use buoyant pimple foam and pimple foam um, yeah if you have uh, studied uh, open foam earlier you talk about piezo foam simple foam you have a hybrid algorithm with uh, it's called pimple foam so uh, yeah in this course we're going to cover or uh, this, this video series anyway it's going to cover some of this buoyant uh, heat transfer uh, you can do natural and forced convection uh, and of course, conjugate heat transfer. That's what I think CHT stands for. Conjugate heat transfer, multi-region form, where you have um, both uh, solids and liquids interacting, or solids and fluids interacting. You can have, uh, let's say, a sp hot sphere in a uh, fluid, and then um, you see how the temperature of the sphere, the temperature profile of the sphere changes over time with... Uh, you know, as the fluid flows over it. Or you can talk about heat exchangers. This is what CHT multi-region foam stands for. Of course, you have the CHT multi-region simple foam, which again uh, is a... Um, it's a... What do you call that? Uh, steady state, yes. Steady state uh, heat transfer model. Okay. So these are some of the things we are going to cover. Um... And of course, we're going to cover conduction as well, which is the Laplacian form. It is not found here. It is found in another folder. Uh, so I'll show you where that is. Oops. Okay, so you go to the basic folder and then you'll find this thing called Laplacian form. And that's where you'll find a flange case. So I'm going to go clear. So this is where you'll find it, a flange. And that's where you'll find a a file to help you, uh, you know, uh, containing a heat conduction solver. So what it does is to solve this equation, which is the heat equation. Uh, you should already know this by now. If you're gonna come here, you should know some background in heat transfer. So this is transient conduction, um, and this is the thermal diffusivity. Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, you you uh, can be like a temperature or something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, this is this is what the heat tra transfer equation looks like, and um, yeah, if you have something like a, uh, you know, it gets it obtains its uh, uh, relationship like this, like so. So you have. Uh, let me open a document. So let's say you have the accumulation of heat. This is the accumulation term. And then you have a conduction term. And of course, assuming it's isotropic. partial x so you do it for the y and z coordinates as well okay never mind i'm not gonna save one two three uh, i'm just gonna paste it it's a lot easier so across three dimensions this is what the heat equation will look like and uh, if you divide throughout by rho cp assuming of course constant density and heat capacity um yeah we can divide throughout by that and you will get an alpha 
Of course, these are assuming density, uh, heat capacity, and K don't, don't change much with temperature. Or rather, or rather, this this doesn't change much with temperature. Yeah. So this is I mean you, before you derive this equation, you have to know these are not changing with time. These are not changing with uh, space. Um, then you get this assumption. For most sol for most solids, that's uh, that's a simplifying assumption we make. Uh, and not a problem. You know, we assume uh, maybe an average, uh, proper average. Uh, uh, what do you call that? A proper average uh, conductivity or diffusivity over the range of temperatures. So I'm not going to save this. Uh, this is what heat conduction is about, and you will find this in Laplacian form. Uh, so we're going to cover Laplacian foam, we're going to cover some buoyant pimple foam and CHD multi region foam. And of course the steady state variants as well if we have the time. Um, what you should know by now, you should uh, have at least uh, some basic knowledge of open foam because that's what I will assume. You should have, uh, if you're not sure, you can look through uh, the basic uh, open foam for Windows 10 uh, Windows 10 um, playlist. I have it in the description. Uh, if you're not sure, you can watch through that. Uh, it shows some boundary layer stuff, very basic flows. And of course, the open foam intermediate when I talk about snappy hex mesh and other such utilities. So I already assume you'll have a basic knowledge of these kind of things. Um, yeah, and we'll continue. All right, so uh, firstly, uh, I want to introduce us to you now what's the difference between let's say this uh, Laplacian foam and simple foam. So I'll jump straight into Laplacian foam here. Um, so let's do a case by case comparison. So let's go to let's see what we have here open foam files and let's go into my custom tutorial folder. This one's the old tutorial. So let me go to, I'm going to copy and paste like so. Okay, I'm going to clear both sides. And one on one side, I'm going to open the icofoam or piezo foam. So on the left, I will go through piezo foam. So incompressible piezo foam. Okay. So, foam. All right, so we can go through uh, laminar or Raynaud average uh, equation. So we can go to cavity. Now uh, let me clear the output. Yeah, and this is what you'll see in the piezo foam. So I know I just expect you to kind of know piezo foam by now. Um, if not, please go and watch uh, the intermediate open form videos. So, in the other side, I'm going to look at the basic folder and do a case by case comparison. So, I'm going to cl uh, press clear. You have a flange. And then, okay, this is uh, after you run the all run scripts. This is what you will see. Okay. <clears throat> and here we don't have an all run script, but that's okay. Uh, we just want to look at the input files and what's different. So we know how to sort of modify uh, our files. Let's say if you have an existing geometry, that is a pipe geometry or some other kind of geometry, we know what to do with it. So we'll just go through some of the input files now and explain what of these things, what each of these things are doing. All right. So let's go to the zero folder first, and let's talk about the variables that are being manipulated. Okay. So, um, if you look at uh, the piezo foam, um, we will have a few things. First is the velocity u, then we have the turbulent uh, dissipation rate, turbulent ke, uh, kinetic energy dissipation rate epsilon, turbulent kinetic energy k, and all these are boundary conditions. And depending on the model you use, you will have uh, new tilde, um, new t, and omega as well. These are based on the different uh, turbulence models. 
you can remove them if you don't need to um, depending on the model that you're using but that's uh, for turbulence so there and of course you have pressure which is p as well in laplacian foam you only have one um, one thing to look out for and that's temperature so let's uh, take a look at the temperature file and as you can see um, the dimensions are slightly different from let's say u for u it will be in meters per second so the meters is the second one second is the third one so meters per second these are the dimensions that are here you should already know that as for uh, temperature right um, this is a uh, scalar field temperature um, and it's only got one dimension which is the Kelvin SI units and this is a vector field as we expect uh, velocity to be otherwise it's pretty much the same um, and then what, what else do you have? We have internal field and boundary field. These are the standard entries that we have. Okay, so I think uh, nothing, nothing too, nothing too different. We still have zero gradient, which is a Newman boundary condition. If you're not sure what that is, it means that uh, at this point, the partial derivative of whatever quantity, in this case temperature, with respect to some uh, distance. Uh, x, y, or z uh, is zero. Okay, so it's a zero gradient over here. And zero gradient in um, temperature context has a very special meaning. It means that is uh, uh, yeah, wait. zero gradient doesn't mean the gradient equals to doesn't mean yeah. I think it means no heat flux. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, conduction uh, is not happening through this wall, so uh, the Newman boundary condition, zero gradient, would mean there's no heat flux. Okay, so that means the wall is pretty uh, adiabatic, right? So, um, yeah, so if there's no heat flux through the wall, you would use uh, zero gradient. That is, uh, there's no flux through, through this thing, you will use zero gradient. So. Uh, we can't, uh, you gotta be careful where we start throwing around these zero gradients now. It has very specific meaning. Of course, uh, if we have a fixed value uh, boundary condition, you'll mean a constant temperature. Right? So, yeah, you remember, of course, yeah, heat flux, right? Where is the heat flux? Q equals minus K, the. Ah, this one is good. Zero gradient. So you have the d du dx, or rather um, dt dx, depending on your notation. Um, that is a uh, heat flux, right? Heat flux. This is according to Fourier's law of conduction. So that's very common. Uh, so a zero gradient, a Newman boundary condition. So this is. Uh, Yeah, these are these are some of the things. Uh, this is a Newman boundary condition. So, isn't it zero zero gradient would have uh, uh, been in kind in this kind of category, right? So, it's like y prime equals alpha, y prime equals beta. So, in this case, it's zero. So, these are Newman boundary condition. Okay, so alpha equals zero. Yep. But anyway, so uh, the gradient, the gradient at this point at uh, at the wall is zero, so it means no heat flux. So this is based on Fourier's law. So we got to be very careful. End of the day. All right. So that's that's the only thing. If we want to uh, change our piezo form files or other tutorial files to uh, suit this, then we must use uh, this. Uh, we must add this T entry in, of course, with the various patches and everything. So that will depend on geometry, right? So in 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 that sense, it's a bit simpler to implement a piezo, um, uh, Laplacian form, because it's just one field, one scalar field you have to solve for, okay? And what do we have next, okay? So I, I assume you, you are pretty familiar with this, that's why I'm going through it very quickly. So let's take a look at the constant file. 
Oops. So in the constant file for piezoform, you will have transport properties and turbulent properties. For Laplacian form, okay, we will have turbulence properties. Of course, the block, the the after running block mesh or some other kind of meshing, uh, meshing uh, uh, software or no, not software, uh, script, you will have this poly mesh as well. So of course, if I do a cleanup, I'm gonna run an all clean script, and the poly mesh will disappear. But uh, you should know that yeah, transport properties. Uh, that's all we have in the Laplacian form. So turbulence properties is cause of course we are doing turbulence in this case. But let's do transport properties. All right. So it says here the transport model is no Newtonian, and then it gives a kinematic viscosity of one times ten to the minus five. These are the only two entries in your uh, uh, what do you call that transport properties file. However, in uh, Laplacian form, all right, so we have the same transport properties file, but we have a different property being listed. So this will need to be added in if you want to use Laplacian form. And this is given as dt. What is dt? This is just simply thermal diffusivity, uh, which is the alpha that we are talking about. Okay, uh, pretty simple in this uh, sense. Okay, uh, we, and then of course there's no turbulence properties here, so that's kind of redundant for Laplace La form. Uh, let's clear things up, and then we'll examine what are the differences in the system file. So let's go to system. All right, and let's go to system here. All right, so there are three dictionaries in this uh, Laplace form, and why are there three dictionaries? Why is there no block mesh dict? Well, the uh, reason is, um, if you look at the all-run folder, it runs slightly different, okay? There is still a mesh generation, but it's using something else to generate that mesh. So VI all-run will give us some clues to that. And uh, this is the usual first two lines we always have. And we have this thing called run ancestor form. And what is this code saying? So it's going to find this log, the ancestor form log, if you found it, uh, it will say, please remove um, this uh, ancestor to form. Please remove this log file. And if this log file is not uh, missing, so there's an if-then statement. So they're going to find this uh, log ancestor form. So if it exists, then it will show this message, which means you got to delete the log and rerun everything. Else, if this thing is missing, then you'll have this uh, ancestor form thing. So what is this ancestor form thing? Again, this is a mesh generation, very much like block mesh. That's why the block mesh tick is missing. You have ancestor form instead. So, but um, you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, it just means that the mesh generation is generated differently. So that that's because this tutorial is designed like that. Okay, so there is a control dict. Let's take a look at the control dict for both. You see, it's uh, pretty much the same, except of course the application entry is different, which will be needed if you do the code properly. You will have uh, start time, end time, uh, delta t, right control, blah, 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 blah. It's pretty much the same. Okay. So in the next video, we want to continue examining what's the difference uh, and what we kind of need to take note of and edit. Of course, we already examined the zero file and the uh, uh, constant file and we found that okay we need to put this entry in called DT which is thermal diffusivity so next video we want to compare the FE schemes and FE solution to see what else we need to change in order to make Laplace inform run on our custom folder so uh, thank you very much I'll see you guys next time